Hi, it's Bridget. Welcome to Above Life Channel. The purpose here is to inspire your spirit and to fill you with hope. Today, I woke up with an inspiration to talk with Princess Diana. I've spoken with her a couple of times previously, and now as we are in January 2020, I think it's a great time to connect with her. I always feel like I have to wear blue or I should wear blue when I talk with her, communicate with her. And maybe that's just a Bridget thing, but maybe it's because I think she looks great in blue. I don't know, but it just feels blue like I need to wear it. If you know if there's a like, specific reason why I might be drawn to blue when I'm talking to her. Will you put it in the comments below? Like you guys know more than I do, especially if you're fans of Princess Diana. Is it a royal thing? Is it her favorite color? What's the deal with the blue? Okay, you guys tell me. All right, so let's bring her in. Oh gosh. Oh, her energy is so awesome. <laughs> oh, I love your energy. And I could feel you so much this morning. Like, I don't know if I was dreaming about you or what, but I literally woke up right before my morning meditation and I just felt like I was having a conversation with you or wanted to talk to you today. Thank you so much for coming, for being here, for connecting. Oh, my pleasure. She says, my pleasure, my pleasure. She's so just... Your energy is so beautiful. It just really is soothing and kind and filled with hope, which we love so much here on the channel. So thank you for bringing that. Can you guys feel that? Feel it. Her, um, the throat chakra is very activated right now. The throat chakra communication connection center. And then um, the heart is also activated, obviously, with the clairsentience where you guys can actually feel her energy while we're communicating. Really important that we, we, we encourage the viewers to do that, to feel that. But the throat is activated. She's bringing in energy from the throat. To me, that feels like truth. What is true? She said, of course. Of course it is. It always is. It's always, it has always been that way. When well spoken, she says. All right. There are many things I'd like to discuss with you or talk with you about. And I think it would be very insightful for viewers to hear from you about some of these things. There is a lot going on in your home country in England and particularly the political climate there. And being from the United States myself, I can really relate to that. A lot of, a lot of change, a lot of shaking up going on. And with the move toward um, England actually leaving the EU, is there any kind of insight, Princess Diana, that you can share with us about that or an understanding about that? Now, I wanna be really respectful, everybody. I know that like politics and monarch and all that, that there's you know distinctions and things, and I'm respectful of that, but I also recognize that you transcend. You transcend the, the confines, the stereotypes, the rigidity of old systems and structures that are no longer in service to you, to us as a higher consciousness. <laughs> She says, brilliantly said, brilliantly said, she says. I, I don't mind speaking of this. I don't mind. I don't mind this, this conversation. I think it's important to recognize that we are all part of a global world and that what affects one country or nation, culture or civilization affects us all eventually. Okay, hey, Diana, I'm going to try really hard not to use your accent <laughs> because I am horrible at accents and I don't want to wreck the message. So I'm going to try, but it's so, forgive me viewers, it's so easy to fall into the dialect here. There is much that can be done on a global level, so much more now than, than it has ever been before. The very fact that the United Kingdom is, has made a choice to, to change its course isn't something that could have been, it isn't something that could have been avoided necessarily. It is something that perhaps in the 
perhaps in the context of Oh, there's a lot. You guys, she's showing me things too, and I can feel it. Uh, her, my stomach is activated, so my gut, like intuition, intuitively, like she's making me feel like a hit to the gut. The soul of Great Britain is different today than it once was, as is with many of your countries across the world. But there is a, there is a call in for unity, for a united kingdom, for a united humanity. These are some of the things that we are working on here beyond the context, um, the conceptualization of your, what your reality is. The, the way the, the government has proceeded and, and made choices based upon the populace, the popular votes, the calls for democracy, even when there are restraints and such words are bantered about without the sort of understanding of the meaning, the levity of and the importance of the future is not dependent on the past but rather it's the present that is creating the, the need. She's saying like the ushering in of a new time. It's an ushering in of a new time. There is a, a new generation that will arise from the struggles that we are currently experiencing, we in the United Kingdom, Great Britain. And there will be more. There will be more. We are a proud people. And what divides us is also what will eventually bring us back, back together, back into, she says, back into, what divides us creates a, an urgency for awareness within ourselves. It calls for individuals to stand in their value and to recognize the differences are absolutely necessary and wonderful for the most productive and powerful society. I'm trying to match your words. It's really, it's really difficult. You're so eloquent though. She's so eloquent when she speaks. So there's more change to come. Oh yes, indeed, quite. You don't, you don't have to be a, a, a seer to know that. <laughs> yes, quite, quite a few. Is there anything you can share with us? Well, as you well know, as you know, there will be changes in the monarchy. Is that this year or next year? Because I'm feeling a 21 vibe, but I also feel a energy around October and November this year, and I'm not sure what that has to do with, but I feel like there's a birth. I kind of feeling the energy. She's showing me like a birth, like a child. And there's something about a marriage, but I don't know if it's a marriage is going to change. And titles, titles will be shifted. Wow, that really feels like now, let's be respectful. Um, the Queen Elizabeth has been in power for so long and, and she's definitely, she's like in her 90s, so she's um, at a pace of her life that things could change for her. But I also don't want to ask you about that specifically. I feel like that is such a special thing between God and the person. It's like a beautiful choice. She says, thank you. That's, it's so, that's very respectful, she says. But she says anyone with a, anyone with a, uh, anyone in their right mind could recognize that this change is inevitable and that it will be coming soon. And the anticipation of that change is, is also causing some unrest 
And when the monarchy changes, it will definitely um, create a, a sort of domino effect and there will be a fall from, she's saying like a fall from, not from grace, but a fall from favoritism or a fall from favor that the shift in the monarchy will not be as popular then. People will get a little cold, cold to it. And she says it's essential for the traditions to continue in a way that will speak to the newer generations. And you see that, she's, she's saying, she's bringing it up. You see that with Harry and his wife, Megan, and baby Archie, of course, right? She's like, oh, lots of love, you guys. She's just over the moon about that. So much love there. And she says, it's not at all easy to leave. I, if anyone know that, I know that. And I think Harry is making the right choice for his family. I, do I see, would I say that it's going to be like this forever? No, I don't believe so. I don't believe that he'll just be gone and, and won't be back. I think after time and some healing is done, then perhaps, yes, they will reunite. Uh, he and his brother have not, despite what is um, portrayed in the media, you understand the relationship with that is quite adversarial, that um, I completely understand why um, he has made the decision for his family, what is best for his family. And the discord between his, him and his brother and he is simply not true. It's not to the depth that, that it has been, been made out to be. However, they each have a choice to make. And William, in line for the crown, must be the... He, he does not have a choice. He must be there. And he has embraced that and accepted that is his life. And he's very, he's, he's fulfilling that very honorably, fulfilling those duties. But that is not, that is not to say that is for everyone. And Harry much, much more prefers to go his own route and to go his own way. And I am in favor of that. Is there anything, so in the United States, because his wife Megan is from the United States, we have very strong, um, I think collectively, from what I've seen on social media, very strong opinions about how the media treated Megan um, because of multiple things, because she was an American and not a royal and not somebody in royalty and she was outside of the country and that, um, she quite frankly was not Caucasian. She's not white. And so it seems like she was definitely a target of the old, um, of a lot of racism, it feels like to me. And, and I didn't follow a lot of the stories or anything like that. I just, I can feel that. I mean, that makes sense. And that Harry would just wanna want to protect his family. And then Harry and Meghan, such a partnership, it feels like would need to separate themselves from that because she's just the target constantly. How do you, what kind of insight can you give about that? Now that's my limited view, my friends, you guys. That's my personal perception, opinion, view. That's not factual necessarily. That's not something that I, um, I researched or anything like that. It's just, that's just kind of what I get from it, just from seeing the clips on social media, which is only a limited view. Let me be clear, a limited view, okay? The media is a, a difficult topic of conversation. It's an animal unto itself and a beast. And Harry sees it as a, an enemy, a villain and that has played out. It's not like him to stand aside and just simply allow mistreatment or disrespectful comments or storylines. And you, 
you should understand that you are limited when you are in royal service. You are limited as to what you say and how you respond. You are very, very limited in the communication. And that is not, there was not enough done on Meghan's behalf in Harry's view, not to defend her, but to call into question the very sources of the articles and the headlines and the storylines around his relationship and his wife in particular. There was very much judgment and that is typical, it's sad to say, very typical. Many royals will be in this situation. It is par for the course, you would say. It is not right. It was very hurtful. And there is a certain point where you must maintain your integrity and take a stand. And he did that. Their family did that. I think he's very brave for what he did. And I know that eventually, when the time is right, there is hope for a reconciliation. Yes, Harry was very upset with the royal family for not taking a stronger stand against the information that would come out that was completely unjust about Meghan. There wasn't enough of a um, protection of her. And so with that, that is the choice that they made for their family. Are they gonna have more children? Do you, can you tell us that? Oh yes, oh yes, <laughs> oh yes, of course they will, of course. Of course they will, yes. Yes. All right. Well, those are the few things that I really wanted to chat with you about. Thank you for being so open. I appreciate that. And I, I really don't want to get into or be part of like drama or all that. But I, I know, Princess Diana, that it's so lovely when you come in and we can connect with your energy and the viewers can feel you, feel your essence can you give us any kind of parting words or a message for us where where we are here in our lives right now there's so much contrast and so much negativity in the world we could really use some beautiful energy inspiration and hope she says i'll, I'll try I'll try. I think it's important to remember that, remember that, and listen to your heart. Listen to your heart. You know, you know what is the truth for you. And to be in a, always, as much as you are able, as much as it's possible for you to be in a loving way, Because the energy of hate, of, of division, it will ruin you. It will, it will ruin your ability to know that you are loved and that you are loved. It will, it will create a division within yourself. I do believe that as individuals, we, we can make things better. We do so first with our own families. And then when our children go out into the world, they do so as well because that's how they were raised in knowing in a very solid sense of who they are because of the love that they have within them. So you see how important it is 
for us to follow our hearts. And then the entire, the world, the entire world will benefit. And so, and so too will you. Within your own family is the, when, within your own family, that's a very good place to start. Don't you agree? Yeah. It's not to say that living is without pain or suffering. There, there is, so there will be that. But to go into those situations and to face them with your heart open, with compassion and, and understanding and kindness for yourself as much as for others. And when you are struggling in your private struggle, when there is pain personally, you can know that while it feels perhaps deeply, deeply wounded, I think is what she's saying, deeply wounded, that you can you can create for yourself through that loving presence of your heart. You can create for yourself healing and that is how you will get by, that is how you will survive, and that is how you will change others' lives for the better. And she says, so sweet, she says, you can do it, I believe in you, is <laughs> what she says, like all of us collectively, you can do it, I believe in you, <laughs> she says. Such a heartfelt message. Oh, that was tough to kind of translate. So I hope I, I hope I got it correctly for everyone to be able to really feel the energy. Thank you so much, Princess Diana. It's such, such a deep pleasure to connect with you. Thank you so much for being here. And thank you for being here as well. I'm Bridget. You've been watching a channeling session with Princess Diana from the afterlife. At Above Life Channel, the purpose is to inspire your spirit to fill you with hope because this is your life after all so live it just live it thank you so much for watching